track for shit though. It's almost inevitable by now that you've seen a beat with the tag funk on SoundCloud. I heard something titled similar to Now 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 I'm High Part 4 196 Trill Mix. But what exactly is funk? Why is there so many artists in the genre? It's really good to understand that it's relatively new internet based genre. Let's take it back to its roots. artists and Houston artists were not making anything they would coin funk. If you asked them about it, they would most likely give you a confused look of disapproval. Most of the original artists now sampled on what feels like 30% of every beat on SoundCloud universally identified their styles as underground music. Because that's what it was. They weren't trying to make lo-fi funk. Memphis production was largely do-it-yourself, with very few Memphis artists attending high-budget studios to get a crisp, clean quality. Its gritty sound was entirely analog, with early releases being mostly turntable and tape loops with added drums. The dark and sometimes satanic themes appeared to have been popularized by the then-known as Triple Six Mafia, which by now I'm sure you're familiar with. But the bleak conditions of the Memphis streets have resulted in their lyrics being dark even before them. Popular elements of Memphis music are fast tempos, cowbell melodies, and extremely catchy loop vocal samples. These elements are still being widely used today. And yes, the main way to get the music circulating fast was cassette tapes. Multiple pioneers of Memphis rap state that the violent horror elements, or devil, was influenced by Texas artists like Gangsta Nip and Point Blank. Zerk's interview from the Murder Master Music Show to further solidify this. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, want me to tell you the truth. I'm gonna, I tell everybody the truth, you know, because me and we can influence. Texas actually really started. But see, this is what me and Sweet, I'm, I'm gonna put it down to all y'all. Okay, Texas really just actually started the devil. You know what I'm saying? The unusual fast tempo of the early Memphis instrumentals appears to have been somewhat influenced by Miami bass. The South demanded to be taken seriously in the rap world while blending these elements together to make a more original sound. Another thing that would cause faster tempos is a popular drum machine of the time, known as the DR660. It was mainly used for house and electronic production, so the drum sounds were different from the typical Roland 808 used abundantly in the 80s and 90s. Now on the West Coast side of things, you have artists that have used the spelling funk, but it was just to stylize the artist's name or a title of a song. It was not a genre, but a nod to P-Funk, the music from George Clinton and Parliament, and other old-school psychedelic funk bands at the time. They were heavily sampled in West Coast rap. Skipping ahead nearly two decades, we enter the styles of Space Ghost Perp, Raider Clan Affiliates, and DJ Smokey. Perp's NASA mixtape and Blackland 66.6 were making waves in the new era of underground music, as well as DJ Smokey's production for emerging artists of the time, and his now infamous beat tapes, such as Evil Ways. Space Ghost Perp's music wasn't a direct emulation of Memphis music. It mostly borrowed from the themes and ideas while adding his own stylized spin to it. There's not much to say about Perp that hasn't been said. If you want a full documentation of Perp and Raider Clan affiliates, there are several videos explaining their discographies. Chris Travis, Denzel Curry, Kenai Ada, and the formerly known as Ether Wolf spread the word like wildfire through a series of popular mixtapes. At the time, their influences weren't just Southern rap, but East Coast, West Coast, and lesser known 90s underground rap in general. These mixtapes influenced young artists to do the exact same style of music and dig deep into the Memphis catalog using any site or forum blog they could get their hands on. Whenever an artist or group gains widespread popularity, they create either carbon copy artists or those who simply wish to take the influence and add their own spin to a similar rapping or production style. Arguably, this is how new genres are created. It's also another reason why artists don't particularly like to be labeled. 
In the internet age, everything is split up by genre. Everything has to be labeled or categorized. Popular derivatives take an influence from Southern rap, a trap, trill wave, funk, devil shit, and even some vaporwave tracks now have sampled Memphis or screwed up click vocals on them. To sum it up, funk used to appear to be a mixture of 90s nostalgia for darker underground and Southern rap culture. DJ Smokey is one of the most influential producers of the genre. If you're making any sort of 808 heavy Memphis and Gucci Mane trap remix of the Soul Sample, you're probably influenced by him or someone else that worked closely with him, such as Mr. Cisco. The introduction of DJ Smokey's music was closer to OG Memphis production with the fusion of the grimy, slowed down vinyl and tape sounds influenced by screw tapes. If you want a good idea of early funk beats from 2011-2013 era, check out the Land of the Funk mixtape. As more and more producers became influenced by these artists, you have the birth of a genre. By 2014 and up, the old school Memphis rap influence is heavy on both underground and even some mainstream artists. As the popularity of 90s Memphis rap increases, so does its subgenres and general influence. We enter into an era where artists are avoiding making funk entirely because they feel it's quote, played out, and making only underground music. By this time, we have groups of artists such as Six Set, Doom Shop, and Schema Posse who have rejected the general funk sound, taking influence mainly from the more obscure and darker underground releases, surviving by the reel of a cassette tape. I mean, this. And this. Are vastly different. The music speaks for itself. Now funk has less influence from Memphis rap and more from its evolved form, trap music. Artists will sample any hot acapellas and proceed to do remixes that will put a new spin on both classic and new tracks. You most likely will see mixes of it on YouTube and hidden in playlists such as Chill Lo-Fi Beats for Studying which has taken YouTube live streaming by storm. It's definitely in its most easily accessible state. Expensive sample clearance will pigeonhole it from ever being completely mainstream, resulting in rappers that will completely abandon the style besides the odd, uncleared mixtape track. The surplus of producers is a result of the inviting feel of the community, and large groups of bedroom producers being able to watch a YouTube tutorial and pump out a beat tape or remix. You couldn't talk about an internet-based genre without covering a little on the sites that get the music to its audience. During the early days of the 2010s, Datpiff and YouTube were still the main go-tos for uploading mixtapes. It later migrated to Bandcamp and SoundCloud. Though the Datpiff days are all but over, there is a lot of great mixtapes and compilations still available to download from the site. You'll find most of the earliest music through there. Various YouTube channels, such as Shroomhead, Trill Funk, and North North Funk, were slash still are the main outlets that broke out a lot of great mixtapes. I recommend digging through them when you have the time. Bandcamp is the main way artists can make income, accepting donations for vinyls and the ever popular resurgence of cassettes, which is the most affordable form of physical to collect. Groups such as Purple Posse, Always Proper, and Holy Mob are keeping the 808 heavy funk and trap fusion sound alive. They feature many notable artists, such as Immune, Sodier, Roland Jones, and more. If you are a newcomer and just happen to have been shown a song through a YouTube mix or repost on SoundCloud, the artist very likely could have been from one of these groups. They're worthy of a listen if you liked what you heard. Undoubtedly, Raider Clan invented the genre slash subgenre of funk, whether it was intentional or not. It's not the same as it was in 2012 either progressed or downgraded depending on your personal taste. You won't find many popular funk rappers because they don't want to live in the shadow of Raider Clan. And not all music that has Memphis influence is funk. It's the easiest tag accessible to attract an audience. Most of the fans who like funk will appreciate any other style that samples 90s rap. Any artists not mentioned were not left out purposefully and should not be excluded from contributing. This video would be too long-winded to mention every single artist that has helped push the genre forward. The purpose of this video was to explain the general gist of funk and educate lightly about the influences that helped create it. Below in the description I have linked several Spotify playlists that contain the music similar to funk or music that is directly Memphis inspired if you are looking for a starting point.